Back in Asia Plaza in Yangon, Utwe invited two girls to his theater who were well known for their cannonballing skills. The cannonballing game, better known in Myanmar as Chin Lone, is a quite modern art form in which the players try to prevent the light bamboo ball from touching the ground. The girls are very artistic. No matter if climbing through rings, whirling some banners or climbing up chairs or even a small pyramid made of empty bottles, the light ball never touches the ground and always stays on top of the toe. Their technical skills are quite amazing and I wonder if this tradition is influenced from the European passion for football games. After completing their short but very impressive performance with burning rings and flaming balls, I am left behind with my curiosity about what the Brazilian football stars would think about their technical skills. And of course, there is always a puppet able to do what humans can do. So our old puppeteer Usain Tonchi shows us his version of a puppet performing the Chin Lone Cannonballing. This performance is not part of the traditional show, but is only a small part of modern adaptions for the puppet ensemble. Following the demands of the modern audience, the traditional Twe or Myanmar ensemble also includes many modern aspects into their shows. And this means that Utwe and his members think daily about new ways to create puppet shows for the younger audience, which are influenced by TV and computer games and even football. This means that the new puppets and equipment have to be created. And this includes the question how all these puppets and their technical extensions are made. This is what Utwe says about it. Uh, making our puppets. Because you know, in Myanmar, there is two types of puppets. One is made for sailing tourists. Yes. And one is made for manipulating, for performance. And also there is many puppet maker in Yango and in Mandalay and in Bagan, but my puppet maker is this, very special. He makes the puppets the traditional way and very beautiful. Mm. So if you see, if you can compare when the two puppets make by my, my puppet maker and another puppet in the market or in other theater, you will see. On the following day, his puppet maker, U Aung Tan Tun, visited us in the theater and showed us how to make a puppet. He builds up the character of the page boy in front of our eyes. And this procedure, which takes more than a day, is demonstrated in this video, summarized to about 10 minutes. He starts with combining the body parts. And again, I'm overwhelmed by the craftsmanship, which is shown in every detail. The main body parts have been prepared the day before and got cut out of a block of wood. Aung Tan Tun starts with wiring the main body, using thick yarn and leaving big gaps which will be filled afterwards. Most of the yarn is pulled with a needle or metal wire through tiny drilled holes. All gaps and wires have to be of the same length to keep the puppet in balance and all gaps will be filled after wiring the main body. The different color of the legs, arms and the head come from the white paint which is already attached in order to speed up the process for us.
Before sewing the knots of the wiring, he always checks the distance of the gaps and sometimes has to reopen the wire to control the length. This balancing of all distances takes a lot of time and a good eye of the puppet maker. Once the main body is finished, a pole is built to hang up the puppet. A finished puppet is hung up aside in order to compare it with the one to be made. Now all gaps between the body parts get filled with lots of little cloth panels, which he cuts from old clothes. There are many gaps to be filled. Two gaps on each arm, two gaps on each leg, and the main gap between the upper and lower body part. While attaching and wrapping the cloth panels, Aung Tantum always checks the position and movability of the body part which is very important for the later performance. Most of the puppet's technique will be covered under the clothes later on. By sewing the panels he prevents them from slipping off and filling up all gaps takes about half a day and is very time consuming, but also very important, because it decides how elegant a puppet will be in his movement. The procedure of creating a traditional puppet is such a rare occasion that even the Myanmar television is showing up to record this event. After filling up and sewing all gaps, it's time to attach the clothing of the puppet, which was prepared and sewed by Utwe's wife Tin Tin U. It would be much too easy just to pull over the skirt and shirt. Of course, the puppet's clothing strictly follows the traditional costumes and thus is not easy to attach. Wrapping the long G skirt, sewing the back jacket, all this again takes a lot of time and demands a lot of patience and a calm hand. After clothing the body, the most important part demands even more concentration. There is nothing more important for the appearance of the puppet than the facial expression. So painting the face is again a very time-consuming event. The face painting demands a very calm hand. No errors are allowed or may be fixed. Even a wrong line will destroy the expression of the complete face. The facial expression and the movements of the wired body decide whether the puppet fulfills the illusion of being alive or not.
After painting the eyes and eyebrows with black ink, the cheeks and spots and lips are painted red in the traditional expression. In the last step, the head gets fixed and wired to the body. The artificial pigtail hair needs the help of a hammer to fit in the tiny holes. Even during the last steps of creation, the puppet seems to come to life under the hand of its maker. Now it's time for a first test. Together with the other page boy puppet, which was hung up for comparison, both puppets join each other in a first performance. The movements of the new puppets are still a little stiff. But it passed the test. And now Utwe's children are longing to try out their new playmate and member of the ensemble by themselves. By watching his kids and the adorable movements of the new puppet, I can feel the parental feelings of the ensemble members for their puppets. They are little people. It is no wonder that all members of the ensemble, despite being grown-up adults, call the puppets their little children, or even yokutai, small people. And a few days later, I'm not only leaving some good friends, an outstanding ensemble and amazing artists, but also the biggest family of small people I ever had, including hundreds of little brothers and sisters who spent most of their life in boxes or hung up on a pole. I am sorry to leave, because I know that each member of this big family, mainly Ukin Mangtwe, has taken up huge efforts to impress me with as much information about their puppet tradition as possible. Here in Yangon I did not only make a lot of new friends, I was also lucky to find the last skillful ensemble in Myanmar which is able to perform traditional puppetry a tradition which is unique all over Southeast Asia and more than 800 years old and nearly extinct now. I am feeling helpless. Not only because I have to leave and don't know how to thank all of them for all the efforts they have made, but also because I know that the theater will be closed a few days after I am leaving. The season has ended, again only few audiences showed up, and this is why the stage will be put down and the complete ensemble has to look for a new room for their theater. It is still unsecure if the ensemble will find a new affordable place for their stage. Their future is quite unsecure. For now, the curtain goes down for a last time.